music for all types of life life things like you know there's bath taking music which I'm I'm pretty fond of that was my goal for at least 20 years to make the best bath taking music so I, that got to be in the game my old friend that I was in a band with called me up and s said hey I got this gig and uh, would you want to do it with me and uh, um, and it really just and I was the engineer it was at my house and he, he, he had said we had lost touch for, you know it was like five years or six years and he said um, we were talking he was like man all the records that I dig right now are weirdly the ones you have done or were part of and so that's really how it happened and I um, at that moment because they were demoing for a year and uh, when I got involved, I just was just the engineer, and then I, they, they were like, "Here, do you want to do one of these tracks?" And and so my first song I wrote was uh, the th the main theme of the first uh, uh, Red Dead was like, and then, and so it, it it just went from from me being a jazz musician and a weirdo to, uh, whoa, I have something to say. That makes sense, like minimalist in that way in a, a pretty song. You got some money for me, boy? I seen your name in our ledger. With video games now, they've become more, they can be, but they come a little more like movies because you have cutscenes in between the actual gameplay. And so the cutscenes are really scored like a film. And so you have those. Um, but then when it gets into the open world and into the gameplay, that's when all the rules get thrown out. And for me, I actually, um, it came organically, but it, I actually just developed all my own styles of that problem of uh, how to make music at that time how, how do you make music where they don't turn it off and play something else and so this get that this gets into my um all my concepts of, of space and things to leave space and uh, so for the open world you would have um you're walking around and, and you would have like the first game, Red Dead, we did uh, stems, which are like, um, you know, you'd have, the easiest way to look at that is like, oh, you have bass, you have drums are separate, you have uh, guitars are separate, and then a melody, and so those can play at different times. Um, so in the, uh, that's developed even more so now, where they get blurred, but so that's the basic part of it. But for me, uh, where it started, you have this part where, um, Basically, I looked at it like you're going to get a drink and the game's on pause, not pause, but you walk away to go get a beer or whatever and you come back. And so that music there is not to any um, time constraint or like a tempo or anything like that. It's a key, you can, but, but you would, uh, just to give it, so almost like Foley, if that makes sense. So you have like, um, for instance, even that thing, I just, let's see, like, uh, you would go like, and then you would let that ring out for, um, you count to 30. And I like numbers like that, not 30 bars, but just count to 30. And then you would play something else, you know. And so that's how it started with the first Red Dead, and it developed throughout Ellie Noir and um, GTA V. And then for this, for this Red Dead 2, I incorporated, always, I'm always working with musicians too, and so it's more of a, a call and response thing. For GTA 2, I would do these things at home, these little things. <laughs> leave the space and then you do it, you, you, and then you play again and it, after you leave the space and do it again you do that like usually it ends up about five minutes so it's nice to have a five minute loop but now I took it further 
and uh, gets into this real-time human granular synthesis thing that I've been developing and actually it's developed already but you I would take that then and stretch that performance out and make it like a minute between each performance and then I would bring in uh, for this one it was like uh, Gabe Witcher on violin and um, Jay Bellrose on drums and this guy Ben Peeler would play uh, dobros and things but they would respond to my call and they could respond exactly like that or with these guys you can develop it in a real response and and that gets into the details of uh, the most common you know, musician will take a you know it's easy to copy someone if you like you play something and then you play it right back and that's sort of like the, the core of a, being a musician of like learning and you know but to take it to the next level is that you're responding um, and then that makes it free. So then by the end of like 10 minutes, the guys are really comfortable and they're all playing and interacting to the res you know, responding to it. And so that ended up being like maybe only two or three days of that. Um, but a lot of that was the open world. So then I have parts, I can take my call out and then I have just the response. So then it flip flops that way. Or I can take, um, leave my part in and only use one other part. Um, and, and this is all only just for the ambient music. So when it gets into the, uh, the, the next part of the game where I see a lot your, something happens, you know, you push somebody by accident or whatever and something happens and so it has to ramp up a little bit. So then in that section, you have um, usually, uh, they call them missions, but um, usually the missions have, um, and in the games that I work on, I'll make them all one tempo in one key, so it's not a cluster of nonsense. And uh, so then you end up getting into BPMs and uh, strict things, and then you know, or and not so much that cliched, but yeah, it's like uh, uh, you get into more movement. And so that's really the tip of it. I could talk a lot more about it, but that's kind of the difference between the films and the. Ain't no such thing as civilized. You're the only one of these fools that I trust. Where's our money? I really love westerns, and I really love the past, and I really love the sounds, but I really love the present, and I think from the research I've done, owning like all 400 Morricone scores and things like that, that um, what I take from it is that, especially with the Sergio Leone movies, is that it's a departure altogether. It's not even Western music. When they did it, that was 60s psych. It was not, and it, it wasn't even, you know, a lot of movies you, you play in a certain period and that's the period of the music. This was, um, uh, yeah, totally a departure, and I took that um, as you can do anything you want for a western. It doesn't have to be anything as long as it, as long as it conveys emotion. It can be any kind of music you want, and um, this takes me back even further because I had just five years to think about all these things. Is that um, I'm a very into uh, Kurosawa films. And the composer is uh, Masuro Sato, who is a uh, is bigger, if bigger than Morricone influence to me, because they did this movie called um, Yo Jimbo, which was like fistful of dollars as a direct adaptation of it. But actually, if you watch Yo Jimbo, the music is a complete departure from feudal Japan. Whoa, this is not only like hip, it was done earlier too, so it's, to me it's like, should be done more, if that makes sense. Like the music, you should just make good music and it doesn't need to be locked into some cliche. That being said, it is a Western, and so <laughs> I, I did do a lot of things that were Western-sounding, but we flip-flopped, probably 
by four times between like extremes and like a classic Western. And um, in the end, it ended up being hopefully something a little different. Ladies and gentlemen, this is a robbery. Sons of Dutch makes us brothers. Sometimes brothers make mistakes. <laughs>